Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Friends of Motion, and today is going to be a little bit different. I have my really good friend Natalie Egan from NatalieDesign.com that I'm sort of interviewing. We are going to discuss this specific project in, that's made in Octane, and she will go through her textures and how she created it, camera moves, just a general project flow. We will cover in quite a lot. We are going from hardware, graphics cards, CPUs, GPUs, her favorite laptops, tablets, it, you name it. She's really technical and I love having conversations with these kind of creatives just so that I can learn from it. I'm hoping you guys learn from it too. So with that said, let's jump in and meet Natalie. Okay. Ooh, is that a beer? No, it's um peach iced tea. Ooh, nice. Can you just say what your background was? How did you learn the effects? Oh, did sure. You study so, yeah, this is great. What did I, you study? Um, basically, all I did was I went to school for um, like graphic design, very basic, actually web design. And um, so I, I had a major in art and like art history and stuff like that. Learned nothing except for like maybe some like rule of thirds and like you know, just like how to like complementary colors and just basic stuff. I went into the industry as like a web designer and I was like terrible at it. I was so bad because again, like I was just talking about, that is not playing to my strength. My strength is 3D and like creating photo real 3D. Whereas web design is all about design. It's all about typography. It's all about laying things out and having like these really clean designs. And if, and if Steinberg knows, I'm not clean design. Like <laughs> our friend used to always say, don't go crazy, Natalie, don't go crazy. <laughs> because I would just grunge the shit out of stuff. Cause that's my, that's my style. That's my design. That's my design. So, so web design, not a great feel for me. And I, but I knew I wanted to do graphics. I knew it ever since I was in high school. I was like, I'm going to do graphics. I want to do graphics. So in 20, 2008, during the recession, uh, I got let go from my little web design job, thank God. And that's when I went and just went on YouTube and started watching video co-pilot tutorials. And I was like, I'm, I'm going to learn how to do motion graphics. That's what I'm going to do. Like, and so I started in 3ds Max, <laughs> and I modeled out this car, and, and then I went outside and I like took some video, and then I like took that car and I like tracked it, and followed the tutorial, and tracked it onto this onto the street and made it look like a photo real car seen on the street. And then I um uh I went to the computer recycling facility and got like eight machines from like the dumpster and like took them home and like stripped them for parts and like made like a little render farm out of like basically trash and then like just started rendering just rendering frames and once I had like enough frames rendered that looked good I made a little demo reel and then I showed it to people in LA and I got hired I got booked on a job and then the second wow. or third job that I got was the one at big machine and it was like <clears throat> I remember I got hired to do something for tracking. And then Ming said to me, do you not use Cinema 4D? And I said, oh, sure. I had never even opened it. But I have to say that you are the one who introduced me to GPU rendering. And sure, oh, sure. Oh, man, I was like mind blown. Like the fact that I didn't need to I, wait. Yeah, I feel, like, I feel like GPU render or AI art is what, or GP rendering is what AI art is to the industry right now. I feel like yeah. it was a cheat code back in, you know, 2010, 2012, when we first started doing Octane stuff. It was like, oh my God, you could actually see what you're doing. And all of a sudden, now I can take, and I can basically make anything. And a good example here, I'll show you. This is actually oh yeah, let me share. Yes, go ahead. So this will actually be twofold, but this this was an open that I did for um, country. I don't know portraits of an American sound, and the interesting thing about this is that it's all done with no 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 cameras, no 
you know, no props, whatever. It's all just CGI. In fact, it, looking at it now in 2023, it looks very CG. But back in the day in 2010, um, when people saw this, the client actually was confused of how I made it. Like, did we shoot uh. it? Like, <laughs> what was there? What were the props? Like, you know, like, was there a set? Like, did we use like, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and so Octane GPU rendering allowed me to just like build this whole set and then move the cameras around as, as I please and just make this whole entire spot just based on that. I basically did a similar thing recently, which is this. And in sort of the same exact way, I basically just move the camera around in Octane until I find interesting things that I like. And then I just create like different camera moves. Um, and by doing this, I'm not like spending a lot of time storyboarding or anything like that. I'm just, um, I mean, you should, you should storyboard. <laughs> People should storyboard. <laughs> I just, this is a different way of doing art. This is like, this is like passive art rather than active art. Like you're just, you just seeing what happens. Like, honestly, I had no idea any of this stuff would look like this. It was never my intention. It was just like, I'm just going to move the camera around until I see something that looks cool. And then I'm just going to cut it later in edit and that's it. But that's kind of where I think I have no idea what's coming with AI stuff. Um, but it's similar where it's like, you just sort of, you kind of let the chips fall where they may because you just don't yeah. know what's going to what it's going to produce. It's just kind of like going with the flow. And like this shot, I love. And I never intended for that shot. It just kind of happens, you know? But I think that's the lovely thing about these. It's so unpredictable and you cannot. Yeah. And, I, and I, I'm, I'm sorry that like AI is going to be a topic throughout this thing, but it's <laughs> kind of like, it's so like, it's so like. Uh... If anybody knows anything about AI, it's you. So I, I would love you to just do go, you know. Is that AI is not going to replace you. Someone using AI will replace you. And so it's important um, for us to use it in our workflows because it will, it can, if used correctly, it can make you um, a better artist, you know? I mean, I think that there is something to be said about really good prompt crafting and people that can like really describe something well. It's like a poet who describes something well and then the AI does the rest. Yeah. I'm actually more interested in what Gen 1 does is it takes, the video input and then it you can give it like either text or you could give it like um a picture and it will reskin it to whatever thing you give it so what i did was i actually used ai to upscale not only the final video but actually the video that i used for this and so to give you okay. an idea so yeah, just so how maybe, I made... maybe show me from scratch, like what does the texture yeah. look on? Where do yeah. you plug it in? Because I I'm kind of forgot how Octane works yeah. in a while. So basically, so basically, um, this is well, this is how it all came about. So back, getting just back to this really quickly. There was this part here where the water is like dissolving these pictures. It's like right here, you can see it moving. That was something that I um, again, this was like gorilla. <laughs> back in like guerrilla warfare design. Um, I literally went in the kitchen and like poured some coffee and some milk and like filmed it with a with a cell phone. And then I like used that as an image sequence to drive this like this like as a bump map to like or a displacement map to just like have this look like liquid on the surface. Um, and I remembered that from this project and I thought and then and then so scroll, scroll ahead um it's like you know 2023 and I'm making this piece for a client now this is this has to do with like a um a baseball team and they want to have like all their logos and stuff and they actually wanted a clean version without any logos which is great because then I can show you guys so I was thinking about it and I was like maybe I could like maybe I could like turn it into an image sequence and I could use that as the driver for the texture in a displacement map. So I was like, okay. And the first thing I realized is that it was not high enough resolution. It was HD. So I, A ups I AI upscaled each frame to like 8K. Of, what did you of, use for that? 
I use Topaz. Um, Topaz, okay. Yeah, uh, this I'll, I'll, right put, I'll put notes. Yeah, Topaz Video AI. It's it's amazing. The Gigapixel is the one for images. It's okay, but um, the Topaz Video AI is like mwah, chef's kiss. Like, but why do you have to do it frame by frame? It doesn't just take the whole video. Well, that's in. what I did. I mean, that's basically what I did. Is I I went in and I put the whole thing in Topaz Video AI, and then I exported an image sequence that I upscaled it 8k and then exported it so it was like oh gosh gotcha, i can actually gotcha. show you why not it's, it's part of the whole thing yeah. so so basically you grab one of these and this is already 4k and what i did was i just go over here and i say 8k and then at the bottom here i say png 8-bit is fine um and generate output directory so it doesn't just put them in the same, it puts them in a nice folder. And then that's, that's it. That's all I do. Um, okay, cool. That, that will that will take this and and upscale it again. Uh, this has already been upscaled to 4K, but originally this was HD, and then I upscaled it to 8K. And um, yeah. So it, do you mind if we go a little bit under your hood? <laughs> So basically, like what does your here, geometry? What does your geometry look like in there? Yeah, very so basically, high? in here is uh, no. The geometry is always very low um, on these um, these hills and plains and stuff because all the tessellation happens through the displacement texture. So basically, if I go here and I boot this up, and then I grab here, we have our little octane normal whatever material, and I put this thing, the same thing, AK, into the shader. So I would grab the pictures, boop, put them in there. And then I would click on this and I would go to animation and I'd click calculate. And then it would find the, the end frame. And if it doesn't have, if it can't do that for some reason, which sometimes happens, you just need to um, go in here and just like scroll down and figure out what is the last frame and then type it in manually. So it's like, okay, that's 7182. I'll remember that. Animation, 7182, type it in there. Boop, 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 that's it. So that, that'll that be now a motion-like thing. And that's um, your color, right? Or is that? So that's my, yeah, it's my color. So that's, that's just, just your color. color. Okay. So let's just, let's, just, let's just look at that. So here it is, just color. Yeah, that's good to show it like that too. Yeah, so yeah, that, you absolutely. know, most people might come in and say, "Oh, but why doesn't it look so nice?" As nice yeah, as Natalie. Yeah, exactly. So you come in with the color, and again, let's let's like break it down even further. So let's let's take off this. I, actually, you know, maybe a better way to do it. There we go. I just yeah. hide it. Okay, so there it is. And then let me let me also let me get rid of the camera. Okay, so now we're getting down to brass tacks. This is that thing that I just showed you, you know, and uh, I can put it somewhere and it's like very, um, yeah, so here's the bridge. Okay, so again. Yeah, that's very nice to see it like this because now we can yeah, relate so, it yeah. to the texture we just saw on 2D is now. Yeah, here's the, the, here's the, the 2D color. texture yeah. from the thing the client made, you know, I, I did for the client and I was like, that's cool but I want to see it like in 3D. So there's like ways you can, and this is kind of how my process is. It's like, you just go down that rabbit hole. And I was actually thinking about using X particles and like coloring the particles with it. I mean, there's all kinds of ways you can do this. You do. And is this UV mapped or is it a flat it's just, projection? It's just, a, it's just a landscape. So it's just, it's just literally slapped on this landscape. Oh, so you didn't plan the projection. It's just whatever it comes with those. It's movies. just it's just the landscape is Literal. is sixteen by nine, yeah. And the video picture frame is sixteen by nine. You just make it a sixteen by nine aspect ratio, yeah. and then you just drop the thing on it, and then right. to give it so it's not just like a mound, which is fine. I think I just like um, brought up the sea level so that it it had a little bit more like interesting so so i could scale yeah. i could like i could sort of like surf my camera dolly. yeah because you do need that valley like a valley too yeah i mean you could do it like as one big mound and then just like climb up it and then climb down the other side but i i i kind of wanted it um to have like a 
a bunch of little peaks. And then all that happened is that once I got to this point, I was like, well, I guess there has to be stuff in the distance. So I just, I just, I just duplicated it. Any, anytime you're looking out there, there's like these big epic mountains in the background. So you can get really low here. And then you still have these like epic mountains in the background that are kind of like, you know, you have like a nice little parallax here. Yeah. Now in this instance, we're doing this with landscapes and a texture. So instead of an AI skinning it, we're gonna use octane and a displacement texture to skin it to make it look pretty. So even just, just like that, even, even with just some landscapes, once we add this texture from this video, now we're adding these layers of complexity. And now, uh, you know, there's like, you know, and this is going to be in motion. Like if I play, you can actually see it in motion. That's the beauty of Octane. <laughs> I love that. that that's yeah, just so, my favorite shot, shot of the piece. It's so nice I know, and it's organic. Great. So it's like, it feels like I, liquid. I, it does because it is liquid. It's because it's based off footage that was actually foot like of like, you know, a, a top down shot of of a wave. So it's basically of course, that's why it's so it works out so well. Um, you know, even just this has a lot of interesting stuff going on. Um, sure, and then, yeah. yeah. And so and then when you add a camera with depth of field, now you start to get into like this really interesting, like, like there. You see how yeah. this like I mean, this to me could be Very cool. is, title is, sequence. Is, Tile sequence, exactly. I mean, that's the power of just using basic forms with really good like input. In the video, um, a lot of people were like, oh, did you use like a thing to like drive the, the shapes to the music? And I was like, no, actually I just cut it later. I was just like, you know, I, I, I made cool shots. This is, this goes back to sort of more passive art where it's just like, I just kind of, put in the thing that I made from the client, which had no music and just let it, let it play with some interesting shots. I just like moved the camera around like this. And then I was like, oh, you know, maybe some of these parts would be interesting for like the more like, you know, mellow sections or whatever. Um, I can actually turn on the displacement again. Oh yeah. It, so show me how you added the displacement. Well, the um, displacement is so easy. Honestly, I just copy this. Oh, you didn't change it to a black and white or a- No, or, no, or you don't even need to do that. Honestly, oh. I just took this and I just grabbed this and I went in here and I pasted it right here. And then I went to level of detail. I guess I did actually didn't do 8K. I think I made it 4K. So that's why the one in the thing was 4K. 4K was enough because when it was when it was this, which also looks interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there's just it's like it's so subjective. So, um there's no right way to do this. So like, you know, if I turn this on, you know, here's a whole different version of the whole piece with like a lower res displacement map. And mm -hmm. I, I'm, I don't necessarily like it as much, but, um, but sometimes less detail is actually, maybe it's what you're looking for. Maybe you want it to be kind of crunchy looking and whatever. So, um, but yeah, I mean, this is this is basically the formula. I'll just go over it one more time. Do this. Just make, just just try this. File new project. Just make a landscape, and then take the plateau level, and sorry, sea level. Turn that down a little bit. Now you have a little world with the interesting stuff. Okay, this is like, this is just like baby steps. <laughs> then turn on Octane. And already, it's kind of interesting, right? Then we'll make a little material. So we'll just go Octane, materials, and create a glossy material. And it doesn't show up for some reason. Let's try that again, glossy material. In my added, oh, there okay. it is. <laughs> I don't know why that. So then go like this. Okay, now we have now we have reflections. Okay, so now let's just take this and let's just turn this down a little so it's not quite so hot. Okay, and then let's go to the spec uh, roughness. I mean, 
and let's just rough it up a tiny bit. Okay. All right. So now we have we have something. And now um, we'll just add some lighting. So let's just add a HDR environment. You might have to cut. Oh, no, it's right here. So then boom. And just like that. Now it's way too hot. So we'll um, turn that down. Like 0.1. Still too hot. Jeez. Eee. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I think actually what happened is, is I messed up. So we'll yeah. cut. So yeah, we'll just cut that out. So we'll add an HDRI. This is what happens a lot. It's like you go here and you click here, but you're actually supposed to click here and then here. <laughs> but maybe it's a good thing to keep in because beginners don't know that and they, they yeah. might be doing that. See, that that's way. better. Okay, so um, now we have lighting. All right, that's good. And now we just need a camera. And put the camera in here and then let's see. To do. What am I doing? Depth of field, aperture, there. Okay, boom. We have a little scene, something. Now we just need to add like uh, something interesting to this. So, like, go to diffuse and texture, octane image texture, and then whatever, That's cool. and then copy that. Actually, we'll just go copy the shader, and then we'll go here, and we'll go to displacement, add displacement, click here, and paste the shader, and then change this. 2k and then I will just start moving the camera around a little bit nice. see if there's anything interesting here I forgot how easy octane is I mean I kind of miss it now now that I look at you doing this it is extremely oh, easy oh man redshift is sometimes very painful yeah so I mean I would say that the thing that's suffering here is probably this picture it's like not great so but that's what's so nice about this is that it's easy to like um, try different things. So you can come in here and yeah, that's better. Ooh, that's cool. <laughs> okay, so I found a picture. We can cut to here. So you find a picture and then um, let's find here and then we'll just paste that in here. Okay. Nice. So yeah, but as you can see, I feel like the resolution is not is not good enough and um yeah, yeah but I, sure. I think we get the idea i mean yeah you get the idea i i would say that's why the original stuff had to be upscaled so much and then i had to um take it and like you know basically make it more like i had to like re like copy and paste it a whole bunch but i could see this kind of getting interesting already you know yeah. So it's it's that simple technique of just finding a good lighting source and then again just turn this off for a second and you know and and in you know you can come in here and you can like get a good if the lighting looks good here then the lighting will look good with textures and with yeah. displacement <laughs> so Hi. so yeah so yeah, you add you add yeah, some color. Yeah, I think that's great. And maybe and maybe and maybe what's what might be interesting on this one is actually if we left out the color. So now now we're talking. It's always going to be a little different, but yeah, I'm already liking this. Like it's yeah, now it's like a moonscape. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we're I think that's somewhere. also where we are two so two different kind of people. Like I love the color, and you're more. Oh. I, I do like I do like the color, but I would say imagine this and then you yeah. could then you could color it maybe with something else or maybe a little differently. I would say like there's some interesting stuff you could do here um, yeah. to make this make this work 
even, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know that there's, I would, I, I don't, I think That's the colors were too one. much. So, um, yeah, I would, I would probably, I would probably change it up a little bit or do something else or, or add something, uh, you know. Well, that's also nice. Yeah. So I have a question for you. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I think as a beginner, I was always the render settings and I know it's not the sexy part, but. No, actually that's, that's great. So this is a brand new scene. So I haven't even touched the render settings yet. Now we're getting somewhere something like this and then we just go octane and we say make this into a specular material like glass and then we need to here we go render settings so these are the basic render settings you have direct lighting you have path tracing you have pmc Let's and basically so uh it's a bit tiny but yeah i think that's probably straight yeah that's yeah so it's direct lighting path tracing and pmc and info channels and you won't really ever use info channels or PMC. It's mostly direct lighting or path tracing. Direct lighting is great for what we were just doing, which is this. This pretty much works perfectly fine for direct lighting. Now, uh, there's a little bit of heat here. So let's go into here and let's go hot pixel removal. Let's get rid of some of that. And if we can't get rid of all of it, then, um, we might need to try the denoiser. Okay, so that that's trying to get rid of it, but it's it's actually making it into like a splotch. So uh, I would say we might just need to increase our samples. I this is like the last thing I do is increase samples. Um, it's like. I don't know. I for me, I like try to like find a way around it because every time you increase your max samples, you're just gonna make it that much longer to render. <laughs> People's crazy. He like puts his samples to like ten thousand, and then lets it go overnight, which you can totally <laughs> do. Which you can totally oh do. In fact, in fact, um, you know, because of AI, you can uh, render things a lot smaller with more samples and then up res it later. In fact, that's what I did for this project. I actually rendered it uh, like, I don't know, you know, probably, well, it's probably always only like 256. And then I denoised it through Octane's denoiser, which is usually pretty good. This is this is pretty, um, pretty atrocious right here. I mean, that's gonna be pretty hard to get rid of. Um, but if you can get it to a good point, then um, you can usually put it through neat video, reduce noise, and then also upscale at the end <laughs> and add more frames too. I actually ended up rendering only at 30 frames per second. And then I, and then I added, I made it like through AI, I made it 60 so that when I cut it later, everything was a little slower. I think everything that happens in CG when you're looking at the viewport always feels a lot slower than it actually is. Like but I think the next thing anyone will ask is, what is your graphics card and how much memory oh, sure. do you have? <laughs> because, and yeah. how long does it take per frame? Because, you know, most people who begin do not really have the best hard hardware. Basically, um, you're like always fighting against that. Because if something takes too long, then uh, you're going to get past the honeymoon. Everyone knows about the honeymoon. <laughs> honeymoon phase is this part when you're making art, when it's still fun. Like right now I'm in the honeymoon phase. I'm like, ooh, this is interesting. What am I making? But believe me, in a day or two, I'll be like, I'm over it. <laughs> yeah. So you have to be, you have to work quick because uh, because you'll get you'll get tired of what you're working on and then you'll just abandon it. Um, so that's why it's nice to have like uh, you know, GPU rendering. So I use a 3090 GTX, just one. And um, it is using. Um, if I go back to my settings here, the RTX using, or the just yeah, the and, and it is and yeah. it is using RTX. So that that helps. That helps a lot. Um, I um, just, yeah, and I, I was to say that is kind of like three years ago. It was like the cream of the cream of the crop. Yes, so, yes. Uh, it is actually you know for beginners that's probably not yes. the one everybody can afford. No, actually. So, um, so here I'm actually going to show it because. Uh, this is important. <laughs> and I have to add, Natalie also build their own machines. So. Yeah, so basically, this is also <laughs> very important. more than me. So this is very important. This is this is the professional setup. Okay, one second, I need to share the bigger screen. This is the I professional. I like your fan. That fan is hilarious. No, this is the professional <laughs> setup. So what I do to get... To
to get Octane to, to really, because because actually before when I had this set up, um, it was actually shutting off my computer when I tried to render an Octane. Um, we, when we used to work at um, the place we used to work at, me and Steinberg, um, we would be rendering and someone would turn on the microwave and it would actually blow the circuit breaker. Oh my God, I remember that. <laughs> so, so what I do, what I do to make this, to make this, work is I take off the side of the of the machine and I put a house fan and it has to be one of these fans it's one of these turbo fans because they they blow a very direct like I've tried many times like many different fans like I've tried like a box fan to like completely cover the edges but actually one of these that's like a, a very like pinpoint fan pointed directly at the GPU allowing the heat to rise up from that is you don't have is, water coolers a water cooling uh, system the, or a... the cpu is water cooled but um but that doesn't really matter it's a cpu it's not being used uh the gpu i i would say that um as far as like ooh, what happened? what's that <laughs> <laughs> oh flexing <laughs> that's that'll be next that'll be next episode next next video <laughs> next video when i show um how I aren't use... you worried about the the dust because i see dust yeah uh, i'm i'm worried more about it catching on fire than about dust i would say it's a trade-off <laughs> <All right>. okay <laughs> so um for me like it would literally um shut down because it would overheat and so um there's two things that i did one is i put that house fan on it and i've always used a house fan i don't ever use like special stuff i mean this is like this is like gorilla tactics <laughs> so like we want to make it as cheap and as effective as possible like use the most beautiful render <laughs> and like just makes your shit look good and put a house fan on it so that <laughs> it doesn't overheat your system. And that GPU, um, during, I bought that during the big shortage. I went online, found a desktop, a whole desktop that had that GPU on it. And that's what? how I got it. Yeah. How did because, that happen? Because yeah, it was like, like, uh, you know, again, you have to think about it. Like what is, um, but it's like, you know, you just, you know, how can I like, how can I use this machine? And I'm like, okay, let's see, you know, buying GPUs by themselves is really hard right now, but they've already like slapped a bunch of these into like these desktops that are like ready-made. And so I actually found that desktop on like Black Friday sale for like cheaper than a GPU by itself. And so I just bought that and it came and then it was great. So, uh you know. So then ask if you're a beginner and you're just fresh out of varsity or maybe you're out of high school and you just want to teach yourself stuff, uh, what would you buy? Would you buy a desktop from uh, and maybe a with you a know, I, I would say would you do personally, laptop? personally, um, I always run with a desktop and a laptop because the desktop is like basically your render farm and your laptop is what I use for doing all the other stuff. Like I'll typically work on my on my laptop in Octane and I'll just like, I'll have like a very small window and I'll just, I'll just like design and whatever, do all that stuff, very comfortable. But then once it gets to a point where either the scene is getting too large, like the, you know, it's just not, you know, it's just getting out of control. <laughs> then I'll switch to my desktop or what, and what I like to do is I like to stay on my laptop. Instead of switching, I just see what I can do to make it more efficient. I'm like, okay, you know, am I, can I instance these objects? So they're not, you know, quite so heavy, or can I like the specular, like you saw on that, that last thing we were working on, there was a hot spot on that specular. How can I go in? and either maybe fix the lighting a little bit or fix the material or something to just to clean up that that hot spot or maybe it's something i can do in post with reduced noise or you know there's just different ways that you can kind of keep it under control that i have like it's not going to be crazy i'm not because that's what's going to end up happening. It's like when I do the final thing, I'm gonna I'm not going to be rendering on this little window anymore. I'm going to render at like at least 720p, and I'm probably going to yeah. like quadruple my samples, a long piece. So what, what I'm hearing from you is 
rather focus on optimizing your scene before you go run out and get five, uh, six uh, RTXs and you're so rather just try small until you really hone your craft and then- Well, I mean, I, I, I would say just, it just, it's nice to do something small and, or just to be efficient as you're, as you're working. A, because, you know, if you're ever working on a job, it's going to be a lot nicer for the people you're sending files to. So you're not sending them like these huge files. Just, I mean, sometimes you need a lot of detail and sometimes it's okay to have like huge 4K. Like I have like, it's like, it's like 30 gigs of detail. Yeah. But, but you look at the scene and it's not that heavy because it's just a displacement texture. So I'm, I'm leveraging high detail coming in from the texture with what I know Octane can handle really well, which is displacement because it does it as a shader, it's in the GPU. So just, just think about that. Cause I think what I see in a lot of new artists is that they'll just go and they'll put in a MoGraph and they'll just like hit a thousand and they'll just make a thousand cubes yeah. crazy, you know, unrealistic. So now so, yeah. I have a selfish question for you. What is your laptop? Because I'm in a in the market for a new laptop. So what? You what know, is your laptops. Laptop? Uh, you know, it's it's you know, um, computers, uh, laptops, and desktops to me are are almost disposable because um, they change so fast. Um, right now, I'm on an MSI. It has okay. a, a a 3070 on it, so it does have RTX which means it can run Octane okay. But, you know, laptops these days, um, there's basically two types. There's um, there's the big beefy laptops that are like really heavy. They weigh like 12 pounds. Oh man, and, I used to have one of those. Well, um, those- a gamer I, laptop, right? So there, there are there are laptops like that, which have these big, huge fans and they're really, really heavy. And those typically, will give you a lot better octane like you know whatever but it won't be desktop level but it'll be close so if you wanted to get something like that then you could render overnight on your laptop you could just do it all in one place which is totally fine but you have to lug that thing around personally mm -hmm. i go for the more like thinner like lighter laptop like you know like a razor or something like that now as much as they say like, oh, it doesn't matter, it's gonna have good performance, your performance is not gonna be the same as a desktop. Especially if you go for a thinner laptop, they use something called Max-Q technology, which basically means that it's like a way of like underclocking and, and lowering like the, the speed of, of the GPU to keep the temperatures down. And so it's never gonna be like, you know, full bore, like what you got with your desktop. It's always gonna be throttled. And that's okay with me because I like my laptop to be, it's literally like, I think it's three pounds. Three yeah, and I feel, pounds. I just want to do frames while, while I'm on holiday. <laughs> Not really. Yeah, I mean, sometimes exactly. I like to be friends. Well, that's just it. You know, it's like the old saying, you know, the best camera you have is the one you have on you. And yeah. you can have this great big laptop, but if it's not on you, I mean, this is gonna be a, a trip down memory road. Let me just. <laughs> It's under the couch is so embarrassing. Hello. <laughs> I can't believe that my mouse fell off the thing and it and it closed the web browser. <laughs> That's so unfortunate. <laughs> it's so do cool. You one or is it still going? I think it's still going. It's still going. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, so we can cut to this. So this is like something very dear, very very dear to me, and I and I. It's covered in dust, but this, back in the day, this was my most prized possession. And it's is that still, a Cintiq? What is that? This is a this is a Cintiq Mobile yeah. Studio 16. This was back in the day. This was the hotness. This, <laughs> this was a mobile workstation all in one. This thing is incredible. Um, so again. Like we were just saying, it depends on what you have on you. And um, I used to just take this, throw it in my bag, just grab it. And I would just be sitting there with people and I'd be in ZBrush just. I remember making, that. You ZBrushing oh, yeah. while we're in a restaurant. <laughs> oh yeah. All the time. And just like, and, and you can even use Octane on this. I mean, it's crazy. It has. No GPU. way. 
Yeah. What? No. Yeah. And this is like seven years old. Um, oh my god! Thing, and for the new ones, must be incredible. No, they never made any new ones. They just they just stopped. Oh, yeah, right. but but what I do is I I use the um the link, and I'll I'll link it up to my brand new laptop. So oh, that way okay. I'm using the GPU. I'll even link it up to my desktop, but I'll usually link, link it meaning, up to my... Meaning um, like remote PC, that, that kind no, of thing? No, not remote link? PC. Um, it's actually like it actually has like, you can use it as like, because Wacom has like a little cable, so you can plug oh, it I directly. You, I get you, yeah. Yes, yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. So it's basically become just like a, a second display. But back in the day, this was... <laughs> mm, I used to... I used to, I, I've, I've used this so much. It's actually like, you can't see it, but it's actually like, there's like an area in the middle here. That's just like worn out. Yeah. Are there, are there any alternatives that, that replace I mean, this antique or? I don't know. I'm a very like hardcore Wacom since yeah. um, I just, I feel like they're, the way their pens feel like it's very, it's very particular to me. If I use a different company and if it was like any lag at all, or if there was any like, you know, it's just, I don't know, something about the Wacom pen, the, um, this poor thing, unfortunately, after so long, it actually stopped working. So that's why. Uh, and now it's, it's got sleeping under the couch. Yes. I, I thought about getting it. Away. I thought I want to get, I, I asked them about getting it fixed and they said it'd be $1,600 to get it fixed. Ooh, yeah. wow. Because Ouch. it's so archaic and like they probably have yeah. like like only a few people in Canada in at Wacom that are actually doing it. But I've actually thought about getting a fix just because God, I used it so much. <laughs> but but it, on the opposite side, if you get something too lightweight, you're like, oh, I'll get a Microsoft Surface. That's what I'll do. I'll get a Microsoft Surface. That way I can uh, do do Octane. No, that's that's too light. That's that's not gonna have enough power. So at least, you know. So how about what about the RAM and the CPU and all that? Do you I mean, really again, care about that it, or I mean again, it's just like I don't even know what my RAM is in this thing. I think it's maybe I probably got it 32, but even if it was 16 for Octane, because so much of the processing is now done on the GPU, the GPU has 12. I actually think this might be true. That CPU, that that computer in there might have more GPU RAM than it does physical RAM. And that's, oh. that's, yeah, that's not, that's not that crazy because nowadays GPU stuff is so much more used than CPU that unless you're like really like After Effects heavy and you need a lot of RAM preview, even then, I mean, unless you're doing like 4K and you need like to RAM preview like the whole timeline, I would say like 32 gigs is plenty. And you know, even if it's just 16, I think that that CPU, that, that computer in there has 16 gigs of RAM in the GPU because it's the 3090. I think it might have 24 gigs of RAM on the GPU. So it actually has more GPU RAM than the CPU. Yeah. RAM. Are you are you picky about your CPUs? What kind of brand it is? Or I mean, again, from, I, 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 I would say the only thing that really matters to me is that the G the GPU is NVIDIA because that's what Octane and Redshift really play well with. And again, NVIDIA seems to play well with Intel. So I usually get an Intel, but you know, I mean, I don't know with the future of AI stuff and who knows what these things will run off of. Like if they run off better off, I mean, a lot of the stuff is probably going to run off the cloud. Anyway, you'll probably send the thing off and it'll get, you know, rendered from an, a model, you know, through fucking Discord. <laughs> I can't wait till I have a project for a client, oh, and I'm like, yeah. oh yeah, just wait. I'm just, I'm just getting your, uh, your videos back from Discord. They've been AI, oh, that's you know, cool. manipulated. Well, I think but that's yeah. all questions from me. Um, I mean, there's so much we can talk about. I mean, we're already an hour and a half in. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure if was, people are I, gonna love this long, but I will probably cut a little bit and make it. Yeah, fun. cut it up and yeah. and 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 whatever. But it's I could totally come back in like a month and talk about. Hopefully by then, maybe I'll have access to uh, to the video AI stuff. Um, I never really was interested in the whole. I mean, I've done stuff with Mid Journey and in the in, in the still images, but I'm I'm definitely a video girl. So for me, the video AI stuff once I get access, oh. It's going to be awesome. And as it gets better, it's going to get crazier. So yeah, 
So. Well, thank you so much for coming on to my channel. Yeah, I want so to have you. I feel like this is like technical Tuesdays. Maybe it should be a thing. Like a, yeah, we should do a thing. Technical, technical Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Yeah, yeah, we should. You're do gonna a thing. be away now for a month, so maybe we I catch am. up again after a month from now. Yeah, maybe? sure, absolutely. We can play but, it by ear. Well, it's great to see you, Steinberg, and we'll definitely do it again. And we'll just like talk about stuff, interesting yeah. stuff. So. All right. All right. Have a Bye. good evening. Bye. See ya. Bye, everyone.